Hello, everyone. This is Simplifying Radicals with Miss Pariso. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So as a refresher, just understanding what is a radical and the parts, we have the radical symbol. The index is basically, it's like the exponent of the radical. It's like the opposite of exponent, so it tells you what root you're taking. If we don't see a number there, if it just looks like that, that is assumed that the index is 2, and that's the square root, which is the one's we are going to be focusing on today. So our index will always be a two. We have the radical symbol and anything that is underneath the radical is called the radicand. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what it means to simplify a radical. So, well, first let's just go ahead and take a look at a perfect square that we already know. 25, okay? we know that the square root of 25 is just 5, okay? So what the method I'm going to show you in this particular video is what I call the prime factorization method and the twin, the twin method, okay? So creating factor trees and finding twins. And if we think about it, so basically this is how it's going to work. If I were to factor 25, I can break it up to be the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Well, if you remember in one of our units, um, when we multiply a radical by a radical, the radical sign disappears and it's just the number underneath the radical. Okay? Well, the way that this twin story is going to work, you can write it this way. You can also write it like this. Okay? Is So my story, to make you, to help you remember it. We're talking about twins. And if you've ever watched a horror movie, there's always the good twin and the bad twin. Well, unfortunately, they're living in the house together. The evil twin acts out and gets rid of his good twin and he escapes the house. Okay, so he comes outside. All right. So that means he is no longer there either. They leave and there's no one left underneath the radical. All right. So we, again, I'm making a reference to a very easy one, one that we already know, to kind of introduce you to the idea of the twin method. Okay? All right, so let's see what it looks like with a number, though, that is not a perfect square. Okay? So let's take the square root of 32. And I want to do what's called simplifying it. So basically when you're simplifying is you're trying to find any hidden perfect squares within that number. Okay. So when you go to do that, we could start off by factoring it. We can break this radical up into products. So the square um, factors of 32, maybe you immediately started with 4 and 8. Okay. Those tend to be the first ones that people think about. Okay, all right, well, those are not prime, so we're going to keep on going. We're going to break that down to 2 and 2. Those are prime, so I can circle it and stop. Okay, 8 is not prime yet, so we're going to keep going. It's 2 and 4, prime number, 2 and 2. Okay. So what I can do with all of those primes is I can rewrite my radical as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And I'm not going to put it in exponential form only because I want you to see how this is going to work. All right. Well, again, a perfect square is really has a twin. Say, hey, you are perfect. Okay, because 2 times 2, all right, there is another set of twins that are perfect right there. So what's going to happen is that set of twins, you can think horror story, or maybe you're like, hey, you guys are the perfect couple. Nice, nicer twist to it. The perfect couple is going out, okay? So if they go out, they go out together. So one gets, they're seen as one item. Okay, so same thing here, or if you like the, the good twin, evil twin, the evil twin, you know, gets rid of the good twin and escapes the radical. Okay, now this guy, no one to go out with, no evil twin to worry about, but he's still stuck inside the house, the radical there. 
So this does not become 22. It Again, these are all products. So we're going to go ahead and multiply that out. And we are going to get 4 radical 2 when we simplify it. Okay, so this is, um, again, I'm using the prime factorization method. In the uh, next video, you will see um, another way to approach this um, and get to the same answer there. Okay, now this would have worked um, even if we did maybe 2 and 16. Okay, so you, you, it doesn't matter which factors you start with. You should end up with the same prime factors. All right, let's take a look at another one. Okay. All right, just making sure how I'm doing my time. All right, so having a good number sense and of your divisibility rules and stuff is really essential here um, for when you're factoring it. So just start in easy, like, okay, for me, I see that it ends in a zero, so that means I could divide it by two because it's even. I could divide it by five. I could also divide it by 10. So just knowing those rules. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 10. Dividing by 10 is nice and easy. So I'm going to go ahead and break that up, 27 and 10. They are not prime, so I'm going to keep on going. So I'm going to do 3 times 9. This guy is prime. 3 and 3. All right, so that, that branch, those branches are done. Keep going here, 2 and 5. And those guys are prime. All right. So, again, the prime factorization method really helps us if we can't see and find a perfect square right away. Like, I can't think in here. I'm like, okay, I have to know all my perfect squares and what they divide by. So, I can't really see them right now. I'm going to put all these in order. I like to put mine in order from least to greatest. It really doesn't matter um, as long as um, I would just recommend maybe grouping them. Okay, so remember the story about the twins. Okay, twins are the perfect couple. All right, I only see one set of twins. Okay, or one perfect couple. So that means good, good twin does not survive, and the other guy escapes. So he is outside of the radical. These guys have no one to go out on a date with, or no evil twin to have to worry about. So we kind of just leave them underneath. And now for some mathematical terminology right here, you are going to what I call schmoosh everything that's together. So if we had more than um, one evil twin escape, we would schmoosh them together by multiplying. And we're going to schmoosh these guys together by multiplying. There is no multiplying or schmooshing from out to in. So we get 3 radical 30. And that is our simplified radical for the square root of 270. Okay. All right. Um, if you want, go ahead and uh, check out the other video. I'm going to do the exact same two uh, radicals, but show you a different method um, and how you can start hunting for perfect squares without having to go all the way through using that prime factorization.